Well, hey, look at that. I slept for too long and found myself adrift in the astral plane. Maybe if I stick out my thumb, I can, oh dang, here we are in the ethereal expanse, sailing around in Ghostfire's new adventure setting. The thing I already said. I better build up a crew of cool characters and use their super awesome ship upgrading mechanics if I'm gonna have a fighting chance of getting back to my home in Gravity Falls. It's weird that half of these guys on my ship have new subclasses I ain't never heard of before, and I think I hired a bear also. It's a dang good thing I learned these new spells from the Aether and am flying my reputable flag of peace so nobody oh geez it's the time police. It turns out this whole sponsorship was against time law because the Kickstarter's going live on the 14th at 10am pacific time. Guess I'll go ahead and shoot all the time police and escape into- Oh, there's a portal to the video. Goodbye. I hope nothing crazy like a link to the Kickstarter gets stuck in my description. Among all the monsters in Dungeons & Dragons, these crazy, slimy, sexy old ladies are some of the worst you can actually encounter. They're not outright deadly, but that's because they aren't fighters in any conventional sense. What they all want is to break your spirit and leave you with a new traumatic experience on the same level as the ones you probably play the game to escape. With sinister schemes ranging from whispering to you while you sleep, to managing a McDonald's using draconian law, each hag perfectly crafts their own nightmares to share with the world. And today, we're exploring how terrible a classic forest pursuit can become with the weakest of the hags. In these videos, I throw together a little team, set up an enemy's lair, and then show you an example of tactics of warfare. This case being almost entirely psychological. Step 1. The Hook After her lengthy vacation in Cancun, returning to my channel with a makeover is Granny Toe Fungus. Green hags have a nasty habit of nabbing up newborn babs, and later she, um... Will she eat a baby? Then disgustingly, seven days later, she pops it out as if nothing happened. Making up some backstory here, let's say that she did this to a barbarian chiefess from a nearby camp. This orc chiefess, Bimblar the Bodacious, has tried to pursue the hag several times, but years have passed fruitlessly. A traveling wizard, Seer Nagel, stops by on his search for the all-seeing Orb of Scorb. They meet each other, they kiss, and then enter the forest to go and just kick some witch tits. Okay, challenge rating 3, level 3, level 4. That's a lot more fair than last time, by a mile. This encounter is unique and actually needs three little maps. One to build up discomfort and fear, one to provide a false sense of security, and a final one to break the spirit. Green hags are great with illusions, and they know their forests very well. As our heroic duo enters the woods, they'll be led around with false footprints and a distant sound of a child laughing. They go on until they hit Area 1. Quick note, Toe Fungus can be powerfully invisible at will, and can create up to three illusions at once. This invisibility is how she gathered information about our characters. So in this area, she's dropped three old corpses from the branch of a tree, one of them being a halfling painted green. Her three illusions are the faces of our beloved Bimblar, Nagel, and Baby Bimblar. Let's name, let's name her Cheeto. Nagel quickly finds out that they were illusions, but they're still really nasty. Also, Grandma broke a couple of bee nests here that she cultivated beforehand to grow with certain mushroom spores. Let's go ahead and pause for initiative. The hag will quietly sink into the water on her surprise round, and time begins again. Nagel chokes on some spores with his weak-ass lungs, and then burns the shit out of some bees angrily. The bodacious chieftess slam dunks the con save, and then bursting into a rage, slaps a big chunk of Barry's family. One swarm will stay to defend its hive, stinging the shit out of our boy while the other disperses. With a sickly wizard and a couple more swings of an axe, somehow an angry orc can defeat bees. Nagel clutches his chest, our lady bodacious calms down, and they continue forward. To area two. This one's got some nasty implications, so get ready for emotional manipulations. Even using a keen ear while moving forward, the child's laughter begins to sound both fake and not because half of it is. And this is where the duo comes across a very simple shack near a pond. Emerging from the shack, as it would seem, is an eight-year-old Cheeto. Let's say that Cheeto went missing around the age of two and does recognize her first mom. She looks normal, there's no illusions, and she's oddly cheery. This is gonna stun our big mama while Nagel investigates using some magic and uncovers that the shack itself is an illusion. They embrace, which alerts Cheeto's pet swamp gator to protect her. I put one of those here. Now this can go two ways, but so we can move forward, let me just tell you. 
Nagel can cast Animal Friendship to the hag's chagrin and have the old boy relax or snack on some rations. Alternatively, the party can protect themselves, killing Shido's childhood friend and earning her ire. Let's consider the results of both of these potentialities later, as they're neither of them need, they're not good. There's also a variable that makes me uncomfortable, where they escape with Cheeto now and deal with unexplained problems a few years later. But for now, the little girl tells them where to find Granny and takes them to the real hut, Area 3. Granny Tofungus steps out of the door and congratulates the travelers on their success, inviting them in for tea. Obviously, she has to die. But if these two were forgiving idiots, she would explain over a cup of hemlock tea that her daughter will become a green hag on her 13th birthday, and that Nagel will never uncover the location of the Orb of Scorb, which she peed on and then hid. So either they fight her with bellies full of poison, or they don't care about what she has to say and they beat her up. Let's try to beat her up. Granny standing in the doorway, our friends are 15 feet out, and we do this thing. Nagel's up first, still sadly coughing up rapid mushroom growths. He's gonna cast Blindness, which sometimes is a good move. But not in my experience, and that doesn't change now, because I've never seen anyone suffer from it, and I genuinely rolled this. Granny's up next. She'll start her dialogue about how Cheeto is no longer a true orc, and about how the Bimblar tribe will fall apart without a strong chiefess. Let's go ahead and make this a vicious mockery as the hag backs up to her trapdoor. Mama Orc gonna run like hell through the door and to the grandma to do that one thing from Endgame. Conveniently, she's also attacking someone in a hut who's already won their game. But her brain is buzzing with painful words, so we get a rage, a swing, and a miss. Back to the top, I'm gonna pull a stinker and spin another plan. Cheeto tugs at Nagel's robe, telling him she saw where Grandma hid the orb, pointing to a nearby tree. Not about to sacrifice his own personal pursuit, Nagel will sling an acid arrow at Toe Fungus before following the tiny orc's instructions. Toe Fungus, at her trap door, tells Bimblar that she wins yet again, before turning invisible and slinking through the trap door into the river's flow. The orc is left in the abandoned hut, swinging wildly in a fit of deeply pained rage, as the wizard is led into the woods a few feet further before the girl runs off to find Grandma, who is now relocating to another forest to wreak havoc elsewhere. That felt awful. But hey, if you like tragedy and good horror monsters, a green hag is really all you need. Even if she had died, she still caused everything she wanted. That's the video. Run it on any level party if you hate them, and here's a big kiss from me. Moi. Now leave.